The search for Andrew Obergon put a lot of communities on edge, even causing soft lockdowns at some schools. Our Katie Crow, they're live in Bristol at the gas station where one of the targets of Obergon's crimes. Yeah, Carol and Steve, we're here at one of the gas stations where Obergon broke into while he was on the run. Finally, the torment of wondering when and where he might show up and what he might do is over. I think a lot of people are going to sleep a lot easier tonight. I know I'm going to. It's put me in a lot of stress and not much gets me riled. Every night I went to bed, I definitely had some uh, personal protection devices within, uh, within arm's reach for the last week. For good reason. Matthew Snorick believes he saw Obregon while he was on the run and called police immediately. It was a week ago tonight, so it was around 11.45 to midnight. There was somebody that was down by my, my street, on the curbside, that took off on foot for some corn across the street. It's how people in this area have been living for nearly three weeks, caught in the middle of police searches, wondering where Obregon will show up next. It's eerie to know Obregon was hiding close by, possibly watching them the whole time. It truly was, you know, in that vicinity of my road. And we did go to Obregon's family's house today. It's in a very dark and secluded area. Someone was there, but they would not come out and talk to us. It's actually very close to the abandoned house that Obregon was hiding in, according to police. Reporting live, Katie Crowther, today's TMJ4. There have been a lot of anxious moments. Katie, thank you very much.